I'm Luana Rubin from eQuilter.com and I'm here at the 2013 Quilt Festival in Birmingham, UK. And we are here with Mary Fisher in her exhibit and she's going to tell us about her work, her quilts, and her artistic process. And we're standing in front of this gorgeous quilt which I think really expresses your work with HIV positive women in Africa. Could you tell us about that? I, I work with women in Africa um, because I found that the when I went to Africa, I had a tremendous bond with all of these women. I mean, we both carry the same virus, and so it, we're like sisters. Mm -hmm. And to me, these are the mothers and the sisters who really keep the community going, because mm -hmm. without them, it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I realized once medication was available, um, they needed to have employment and mm -hmm. they needed to feel better about themselves and, and, and be able to feed their children and send them to school. So I started a project um, with the jewelry mm -hmm. to um, teach them how to crochet and how to bead and, and using um, actually Western beads because of the quality and the consistency, but um, my designs. Mm -hmm. And then they take the designs and get local beads, and then I let them, you know, they sell them there, and they make even more money. Mm. But, they, but they, are, um, they are my family. Mm. And you've written about your journey in your book. You oh. mentioned when you spoke the other evening about you're not a victim, you're a messenger. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, this is my second autobiography. Believe mm. it or not, when mm. I went to write the first one, I was actually literally dying and wanted to have something that my children would remember mm. and would have when I was gone so that they would read because in, when I was first diagnosed they were very small mm -hmm. and they lost their father and so I was I was what they had mm -hmm. and then I realized that that because there was no medication at the time for me um, that that I needed to leave them something mm -hmm. but then a few years ago I, I realized that and I'm not dying, I'm living, and need to, to reevaluate what it is I'm saying, not only to them, mm -hmm. but to other women, and mm -hmm. to, especially women, but men as well, but to the world, and, and, and have, a, have a platform to say mm -hmm. um, what I feel about anger and, and um, forgiveness and discrimination and stigma. Mm -hmm. And I use books, I use my art, mm -hmm. I use the jewelry, to, to get my message out. Well, let's look at another piece of your art uh, okay. and continue the uh, story about the message. Okay. Mary, your quilts are so powerful and so evocative and the influence of Africa is very obvious. Can you tell us about your quilts and your art process? My, absolutely. My process is, is, is a very direct process. It's a very, um, it, it, it's just an emotional process. Mm. I, I spend a lot of time block printing, thermofax printing mm. on fabrics, and and I um, and and then when I get a lot of fabric, I cut it up and 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 put it together. So I, mm. I do what the real quilters call piecing, but mm -hmm. for me it's 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 just putting it together. Yeah. And um, and then I'll add things to it. I add words to it because that's a way of my getting my message out. Mm -hmm. um, I embellish, I mm -hmm. applique, um, I, I'll do just about everything that I can possibly do on a quilt, it, but but to give it some life. Mm -hmm. And then I and then I'm a long arm quilter. Oh, so wow. then I put it on a an, on a big big machine and, mm -hmm. and quilt it myself. Wow. I'm not very good on the finishing part, but um, I do have people that help me do that. You know, the, the edges, because I'm not so good on that. Oh. <laughs> but, but, but I, but I love the the process. I love mm. the the process of, of putting it together and of making the pieces. And and the African influence for me is the pictures that I use and the the faces that I use. Those all come from my photographs. And the colors. Well, I guess it is the colors. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't even think about it. It mm -hmm. just is there. Right. And it just happens that way. Yeah. Um, and I guess it is. It's 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 an African influence, but it's it's just sort of 
Um, well, now I live in Sedona, and I have those mm. colors too. So whatever right. colors, it's it's such a a wonderful thing to be able to use color and to say, yeah, that's African, and yeah, those <laughs> that reminds me, and it makes me mm. feel good when I watch when I look at them when they're finished. Great. And I'm just curious, do you work on one quilt at a time to the finish, or several over a long period of time? All you know, going from one quilt to the next. Well, it actually depends on if I have a show coming up mm -hmm. or or if I'm just experimenting. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I like to work in a series. Mm -hmm. So when I get a, a, a certain series of, of fabrics mm -hmm. that are similar, mm -hmm. and then I'll put um, different images on top of them, that becomes a series. So therefore mm -hmm. I work in a series. So mm -hmm. not just one quilt usually, except for some of these, um, it was one at a time. Okay. But, but all the fa I mean, it's one at a time when you put it together, mm -hmm. but it's working on the fabrics um, all at once. Yeah, that's kind of the impression I have. Yeah. Well, you have a special quilt that you'd like to tell us about. Let's go over there and have a look. Okay, great. So we're here with a couple of your favorite quilts, and can you just tell us about your inspiration here? When I first went to Africa, I used my camera and took pictures of the faces and the children and mm. and the women and the the moms and just just the people because mm. i wanted to have them i didn't know if i'd be going back mm. you know i wanted mm. to but i didn't know mm -hmm. so that was what struck me when i got home mm. is the 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 eyes mm. and the faces and the truth is for people that have so very little mm -hmm. they have such incredible joy in their lives mm -hmm. Um, this particular quilt, and the story about it, it's representational, certainly, mm -hmm. because um, I, I don't know about this little boy exactly. Mm -hmm. But when I was there one time, I, I, I was handed a baby mm -hmm. from a mom who had just died in a hospice. It was, oh. it was just a remarkable experience. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have to take this baby home, mm -hmm. you know, and I named him Bupe. Mm. which it means gift mm. and I, I said well I better go home I, I started the paperwork I better go home and talk to the children just make sure they're all right with mm -hmm. this and then uh, several weeks later as I was getting things ready um, we, we didn't know if he was HIV positive but he mm. passed away so oh. it was all very oh, so mm. emotional like mm. I really felt like I was losing my own child mm. and 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 so it's all of these children are representative of the fact that Aren't all children our children? Yes. And are, yes. don't we have that kind of responsibility? So, Absolutely. So in my heart and in my mind, this one is just, just special mm -hmm. to me. Yes. Yeah. And I would also like you to tell us about your book because we're going to carry this book, Eddie Quilter. Which I'm very excited about. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and just tell us a little about the book. Um, Abitaka, which means, actually it's a pan-African term and it means community it means we are one and we take care of each other mm. and and so we we have to do for each other mm -hmm. um, and so I named it Abitaka and um, it is the story of some uh, my quilts some sculpture mm. mostly quilts mm -hmm. um, and it talks it talks about each quilt and it talks mm. about a little bit of a story about it and why and why it means something to me there's um, just some of it's fun and some of it's touching, but it's mm -hmm. um, it's certainly my work. Well, I can't wait to read it. Good, thank you. I thank will you. give you one. Well, thank you for your time, Mary. Thank you, Lorena. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this interview with Mary Fisher. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>